Good evening. We're going to sing a couple songs tonight. They're not very long. The first one we're going to do, Away in the Manger. songs about a mother praying and I just want to say it was such a blessing to have a mother as a prayer warrior and I remember telling her one time I said mom it's a wonder I said that I'm still even here and she told me it was because I had a mother that was at home praying for me and I believe that and my mom was a prayer warrior I heard her pray for me and she prayed with me so if you have a mother here and that prays for you, just be blessed. Thank you. And this is called, I Heard My Mother Praying For Me. Last night as I lay down to sleep, I heard someone begin to weep. Then I I was blessed to have her mother as a friend and a sister in Christ. And I, was, I used to be her assistant pastor. So, yeah, amen. I watched her pray for that little brat. <laughs> she even asked me to pray for her. So I did. So if we go into business and we hire employees, 
and it's a service industry type business. What type of a contract might we have those employees sign or an agreement with us should they depart our employment? A no compete, right? No compete clause. A no compete clause. You know, when when we got saved, we kind of signed a no compete clause. Um, I'm trying to put this in a in a good perspective to you tonight. A no compete clause. We're not here to compete with the Lord. And uh, when we got saved, it's all His now, and He's who we recognize as the authority of everything. Jesus, during his earthly ministry, said something that, uh, forgive me if I don't get this 100% right. I think I will, but, you know, I'm human. He said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Did you hear that? I'm, I'm, I'm going to quote Luke 6.38. He says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Now, measure is something that you have to... You might have to weigh it out or measure it. Good measure. Um, guys, I know I've done this out in the garage. I've taken something and, and I've used so much of it in a, in, a, in a container that I think I can put it in a smaller container. So I start to put it in a smaller container and sometimes I have to shake it around. Amen? Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. We're to be a giving people, giving of our time, giving of our talents, giving of our, our, our finances, giving of everything that the Lord has bestowed upon us. We're to be a giving people. That's a no-compete clause. That's how I see it. Uh, we don't try to compete with the Lord Jesus Christ, but rather we serve him with, with all that we have. So when we look at James tonight, as we, you know, all know we're on the book of James. I, I'm pretty sure you know that, unless you forgot since last week. But uh, in chapter number four, again, we're going to be looking uh, this evening at a really short verse. Verse number 10. <clears throat> I want to share a, not my testimony, but I want to share a, uh, just a testimony. I have a friend that knows the Lord also. He and his wife are giving people. They'll give up their finances. They will help others. And I had shared with him uh, one of the problems and one of the nice, it would be nice to have this at the Haven, a metal detector. Because you get strangers coming in, they don't know who anybody is uh, that, that's in the doorway. Those are not cheap. You know, one that was halfway decent was, was, was going to be around $4,000. And uh, so <clears throat> he come to me after a meeting that I had spoken at, spoke at, and he come to me after the meeting and he says, Brother Bob, he goes, can you get me out there on a tour? And I said, yes, I can, and I'll take you out there. So we met. We scheduled a time to do that. He and his wife come out, walked around, listened to the things that I had to say, uh, and they asked Anne Marie some questions, and s they sit down and wrote the check for that device, and it's now installed. And, but the one thing that they said, no one is to know. Who did this? No one. That's the, that's the agreement. No one is to know who did this. And and I said, you got it. You got it. Not doing their alms before men, but for God. 
and they made it readily apparent that they wanted everybody to know that the Lord has blessed them and they in turn are going to do what they can for the things that are going on for the Lord. So I, I, that, that's a good illustration of what the Lord was saying in Luke 6.38, if you needed the address for that scripture tonight. The no compete clause with our, with our, with our time, our talents, uh, we sign up for that when we get saved and become a child of God. A lot of people have violated that contract, I believe. But tonight we see a, a passage of scripture that reminds me much of that in verse number 10. James pens down here, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he might lift you up. Okay, good. He shall lift you up. And as we see that, uh, that takes, that, that, Let's take a trip back to verse 6 in that same chapter. We see in verse number 6, he says, But he giveth more what? Grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. The humble. Yes. And when we, when we look at this verse in verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Let, let's take a look at the theme, the thought, and how the Lord works through his word. Go over to uh, Luke chapter 14 with me. As you're turning to Luke chapter 14, Um, whenever we have a propensity to go out into the world and tell people what we did, what we did, if I go out in the, in the world tomorrow outside of this church house, now it's okay to share with your brothers and sisters in Christ, but when we go outside of the church house and we start telling people what we did, that's doing our alms before men. You understand that? that? God says, whatever recognition we get for that out here in the world, we got our reward. Don't plan on getting a reward for that in heaven. He's very clear about that. So if you go out and tell somebody what you did to bring attention to your own self, then... You have not humbled yourself before the Lord, nor have I, if I do that. And we, we, have, we have received our reward here on earth. We, that's what we chose. And therefore, there we go. Um, we, you know, when the church donates things to people, we don't run out into the world. We don't get our pictures taken. We don't advertise it in the newspaper what we did. Otherwise, that's our reward. That's the reward we choose. Humbling ourselves. Humbling ourselves is that no compete clause. If I'm doing something, I'm doing something because I want God to get the glory and honor for it. Amen? That's why I, when I do it, I want, I want to make sure he gets the glory and the honor. And you say, well, but nobody else would have been able to per perhaps do that. Well, that may very well be true, but Jesus owns me lock, stock, and barrel. There's a no compete clause. And it, it takes a conscientious effort to humble oneself in a case like that to say, praise the Lord, it's because of God I did this. You know, the, per, the, the person receiving it, don't worry about it. It's because of the Lord I did this. Praise the Lord. Okay? Not me, the Lord. Uh, we, we humble ourselves. We look here in uh, the book of Luke, chapter number 14. Now, these are, are, are people that are doing these before men. Uh, these verses are, are, are primarily having a godly humility before mankind, as I read these two verses to you. Luke, chapter 14, and verse number 11, we see, For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. 
Now, abased uh, means to be lowered in prestige. Now think about this. For, for those of us who are vessels of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a vessel, what the Word of God is telling us, what our Savior is telling us here, as, as a vessel to Jesus Christ, we are essentially, if we don't humble ourselves and we go out here and exalt ourselves, in his eyes and in his power, we will be what? Abased. And, and abased means that we will be lowered in prestige, we will be lowered in value in what we mean to him, we'll be lower. We lower our own, we lower our own value. That's exactly what we do. We, 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 we degrade ourselves. There, there's a degradation there, if you will. We don't lose our salvation, but, we, but we, there's a degradation. But if we, he says, but if we humble ourselves, then we will be what? Exalted. exalted. And we'll be exalted if we humble ourselves. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be elevated in prestige. In his eyes, we'll be, we'll be elevated uh, in, in, in importance to him in his eyes in that, in that deed and in that act. And, and it's just like the company. If we, have, if, if we were able to own a company, uh, any one of us that owns a, would own a company, the employee that goes all out for us throughout their every day, that's the employee we're going to value, isn't it? That's the employee that we're going to want to take care of, isn't it? That's the employee uh, that we're going to try to, we're going to make sure we meet their needs because that employee is giving us the glory, giving us the honor as the company owner. So think of it in those terms. That's what the Lord's trying to tell us here about humbling ourselves. And if we humble ourselves, we will be exalted but if we don't, we will be abased. Yes. So, look, and this is before men. Take a look at chapter number 18. Verse number 10, this is, all, this is a great illustration of that. Two men went up into the temple to do what? Pray. So they both went there for the same purpose, the exact same purpose. Um, think of it this way. You, you get two people that shows up to help somebody. They're both going there for the same reason. After the job is done, watch and listen to see what each, each person does. One goes out and goes, yeah. I went over and I took care of old Joe there, and, and then he didn't have this, so I did that for him, and, and blah, 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 you know. And the other guy just said, you know, the Lord laid it on my heart, and we took care of some things. And praise the Lord that he sent me, you know, lifting up the Lord. Here we see and two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you this, this is Jesus speaking. This man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Now we get an idea of what James is talking about in, in, in chapter 4 and verse 10. We, James is saying that, that we humble ourselves not only before men where God is concerned, but now we're going to see where we humble ourselves to God. Take a look at chapter uh, 1 Peter chapter number 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. 
In verse number six of chapter five, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. It'll be him that will lift us up, him that will exalt us in due time. We see, we see both cases though. We see the, the, the humbling ourselves uh, where men are concerned and then humbling ourselves where God is concerned. Look at the, the verse right before that. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject, what? One to another, and be clothed with what? Humility. Humility, yes. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. There we see that again. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Uh, what a blessing that is. Uh, one last passage of scripture I want to share with you is Isaiah chapter 57. And there's a whole mouthful in this one verse. If you look at verse 15, for, for thus saith the high and lofty one, you notice that capital one in your Bible, that's, that's the Lord God, God the Father, that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. Here's what he says. He says, I dwell in the high and holy place. Who's he dwelling there with? Huh? Jesus Christ. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Okay, well, Lord, why are you why are you telling us that you're dwelling with Jesus who is who is of a contrite and a humble spirit? What did Jesus do? He humbled himself to his father. He, he, he didn't take the glory. He humbled himself for, for the father. And now what are they doing together? Uh, to receive, to revive the spirit of the who? Yeah, to revive the spirit of the humble. And to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Contrite ones. Uh, what a blessing that is to know that when we humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, when we're of a contrite heart and we're of a broken spirit, he's right there for us right now. Boom. When we humble ourselves before him. So that pretty much takes that verse in full circle for us as we see, uh, as I read it again, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Uh, what a blessing that is tonight. Brother Adolph, you're going to lead us in a closing song. And we'll be on our way. It's hard to believe that the drama is going to be upon us next week already. Hopefully there will be no blizzards. Unless it's a Dairy Queen. <laughs> Amen. If you need to come and pray tonight, you're more than welcome to. If you'd like for me to pray with you, I will do that also. 241.